Well, hello there. So, again, it's been quite a while since I made a video because, well, um, I don't really have time to make videos, even though uh, some people would say I have all the time in the world. However, um, recently I got this machine, and there's quite a story uh, behind um, why I have this machine. Uh, first of all, uh, you'll have to excuse me uh, because, well, I'm in the workshop and there's pretty much just a thin uh, glass bl glass uh, pane separating me from the street, so possibly um, there will be noises in the background, like people talking and all that, and I've chosen a time um, when there's not much activity out in the street. Um, right now, most people are taking siestas right now, but there will be noise anyways, because, you know, Murphy and all that. Uh, so, on with the machine. So this, I have to slap the machine, it's my trademark apparently, um, is uh, an IBM eServer P-Series 660 model uh, 6H1. Now, that's only partially true. In its current configuration, which is outside of a rack, uh, it is that. Uh, inside of the rack, however, uh, the rack that it was in, so in its original configuration, it would have been an RS6000 Enterprise Server Model H60. Sorry, H80. So, bit of a story um, on this machine. Uh, as you can see, it's quite big. That is a good uh, meter deep. And this is, it's divided in two chassis, two drawers. Each one of them is 5U. So, um, I was looking for a, a rack closet, a big rack, at least uh, 16U. And it just so happened that in that in well a local um, local site for classified ads, um, the an RS six thousand rack popped up. Um, the closet and everything with this machine inside it, and it was fifty euro. And well, yes, I couldn't pass that up, so I went. Uh, to the place to pick it up and there was the rack, there was this machine and there was also that disc array right there in there a couple of PDUs whatever and so of course uh, uh, my dad was helping me and we had to get the rack in the car and it just so happened that, well, we couldn't lift it with the machine in it because, well, each one of these drawers is 50 kilos. And it's another 50 kilos for the uh, disc array. So we took everything apart and we went to put the rack in the car. We had looked up all the, all the measures in the, of the rack uh, on the internet. And it just so happened that, well, it looked like it would fit, it didn't fit. Um, we couldn't put the rack closet in the car. So, now that we had done the trip there, we were already there. Uh, it was a garage and all these drawers and the disc and all of the cables uh, were just lying on the floor. Well, we thought, let's... Uh, not give the guy who was selling us the rack uh, more hassle and let's just take these things as scrap and well we gave him like 10 euro for this machine and all the cables and the disc array and the PDUs and the rack was left there and it was a beautiful uh, beautiful looking rack um, and yeah but uh, I couldn't afford a, 
you know, to rent a, a van, for example, to take it home. So we ended up with this machine. Now, this machine apparently was handling, uh, it was in a big office building, and apparently it was handling some sort of database because when I uh, boot it up, it tries to mount a an Oracle database on the disk array, which, by the way, I cannot turn on the disk array because I don't have the fan packs uh, for it. But uh, apparently it was handling some humongous database. Uh, for I guess I presume that that office building. So, let's get on with the machine itself. So as you can see, it's divided into um, two drawers, as I've said before. This top drawer is called a CEC, or Central Electronic Complex. Um, that This thing contains uh, the processors and it contains the memory, and that's pretty much it. it it's just all the silicon here. That's it. Now, here in the bottom is the uh, I.O. drawer and this contains um, all the external uh, disk drives, all the... so it contains a CD-ROM drive, a DAT drive, this is a DDS4, so that's 20 gigabytes, I think, and it contains a system service processor, which of course you use to manage the system, to you know turn it on, manage it remotely, all, all that, get serial consoles. It contains all the I.O. of the system, of course, all the serial ports. It has 14 PCI slots, hot swap, all of them. Some of them do 64 bit, some of them do 33 bit, some of them are 66 megahertz, some of them are uh, 33 megahertz. It also contains in this case, it, it's an option, but this machine has it. Um, it contains uh, two 68-pin SCSI disks that have AIX in it, that have the operating system in them. Uh, now these panels are removable, and in fact they are so removable that they come off if I remove this sticky tape here. Um, that's because... Sorry, you cannot see that. That's because these things were mounted in rails and... Well, uh, the rails hold the, the panels using these screws. I don't have the rails because I don't have the rack. And I was dumb enough to not pick up the rails even though we dismantled them. Uh, so, actually, before showing you that, let me show you the way these connect together. So I can turn the system around. I'll I'll turn them around when I show you the the drawers independently. However, I can show you the cables. Now this bag contains all the system interconnect cables. So let's see. We have this. These two communicate using um, a VSCOM cable. I have no clue what that is, but it is a VSCOM cable. I guess it communicates, I don't know, control signals. Um, it also uses JTAG, funnily enough. Um, it uses JTAG to communicate between these and the actual information, so the actual data, is communicated through uh, RIO or remote IO cables. Uh, it has the the CC has two RIO buses, and this also has two RIO buses. Right now, in, in this configuration, with only one IO drawer you're supposed to connect both RIO buses for redundancy uh, between these. However, if you have another uh, 
I.O. drawer you're supposed to connect uh, one bus out of the CEC to one I.O. drawer the other bus out of the CEC to the other I.O. drawer and then connect the two I.O. drawers together with the other bus, the other RIO bus that is left on them. So let me show you the cables. These are some mighty things which I'm pretty sure would have cost an arm and a half back in the day. So let's start with uh, the VSCOM. So that's this cable. It's incredibly thick. Well, it's not as thick as the JTAG one, but yeah, it uses this connector, which looks like a like a SCSI two uh, connector. However, it is not a SCSI two connector. It is longer. I think it has a lot more pins. It's all shielded and nice. Let's get to the JTAG cable. Now, this has a a D connector. I do believe it is a D sub miniature connector. And I don't know how many pins there are there. I haven't counted them. But look at this. It's massive. And it's also one of those staggered ones like VGA. So it has I don't know how many pins there could be there. I don't know, maybe 80 or so. And now the R the RIO buses use these cables these yellow connectors uh, that I thought they said IBM somewhere there focus there it is it says IBM and I think these are actually um, the same as SCSI 2 connectors I don't think the cable would work for SCSI but I believe these are 50 pin, just like SCSI 2 connectors. So that's how these chassis connect together. Now the disc array um, was connected via SSA. So SSA is uh, Serial Storage Architecture. It's pretty much SCSI only done via serial. And in fact all the discs that were in the disc array were um, SCSI. SCA discs with an interposer. It's it's almost like SAS, but it's not quite SAS. Um, and the connectors. So this thing has the I/O drawer, has two uh, SSA cards, and uh, the drawer itself was connected using two, uh, sorry, four of these SSA cables. Now these are micro uh, D connectors and yes micro D um, you could make uh, you know jokes with that but these things are so cute they're so tiny I do believe Cisco uses them for um, serial cables and stuff but they are so tiny like it's incredible they're so cute now these machines, of course, they had redundant power supply, so there's um, there's two power supplies in each drawer. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's another story. Uh, these have independent power supplies. So you have to connect, if you want full redundancy, you have to connect uh, four power cables to this thing. Of course they were connected uh, into a PDU in the back of the rack uh, with a huge, I don't remember what, what it's called, IEC6030 connector I believe. I don't know, they take uh, 240 volts. Great. Um, so let's take a look at the power supplies. Now one of them actually blew up on me. Well it didn't quite blow up on me uh, it was already blown, however I was an idiot and I completely ignored the fact that there was a a, a popped uh, circuit breaker in the PDU and I thought oh well 
you know, it, it's been popped because it's, I mean, it, the, the little reset button was out. And I thought, well, yeah, maybe it's because, you know, it's been moved around. It Nope, I plugged this thing in and it let out a mighty bang and that power supply shot. However, I don't care, I have another one. So, um, I think the power supply is actually between the, the drawers. They look the same. They're not. Um, they have some different rails. Let's take a look at the power supplies in the in the CEC and let's take this panel off. Uh, these drawers, even though they're uh, completely different um, internally, they are actually the same chassis. So as you can see, this has blanks here for where the operator panel goes in the other chassis and for the five and a quarter inch uh, base and the three and a half inch uh, bay right there. So these are the power supplies. This is the blown one, as you can see, I have taped up the power connector so I don't, you know, blow something. So they come out, uh, all of the stuff in this machine uh, comes out by pulling out these blue little thingies. Then just get this handle like so and you pull out the power supply. Again, it's huge. There we go. And it's heavy too. Let's take a look at the specs on the power supply. If my camera would focus. There we go. So... Yeah, look at that. 57 amps on the 3.3 volt rail. It's absolutely crazy. I do believe this. Uh, these are... Oh, there we go. 645 watts each. Now they also contain the fans, and these are the system fans, they are not the power supply fans. Uh, they are in the same mount as the power supply, however, these run independently of the power supply. It also has this mighty big um, connector right here in the back. Again, if I can get my camera to focus, which is not an easy task. There we go, look at that. That's just ridiculous. So there's again four of them in this system. Uh, let's take a look at the I.O. drawer. Without the panel. Take off the sticky tape here. There we go. So we have two power supplies, the CD-ROM drive, we have a floppy drive, this is a regular 1.44 megabyte PC floppy drive, as you would expect from IBM. And the operator panel, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, well, no, not really, but I should rather upload a video of this machine posting because this thing when you power the system up it starts uh, showing all the diagnostics uh, codes and this is a VFD vacuum fluorescent display and it looks absolutely beautiful so from this panel you again you see all the diagnostics codes there you have your power button and you have your reset button that's pretty much it for that so let me turn the machine around and I'll get back to you. Right. So here's the back of the machine. Again, this is the CEC, which contains, again, CPU, memory, all that. And this is the I.O. drawer. The CEC pretty much has just these two 120 millimeter fans. They are hot swap. Of course they are. Uh, they are absolutely humongous. Um, at least in thickness, they are, and they use a lot of power. Uh, it says, well, 500 milliamps at 12 volts, that's 6 watts per fan. Pretty ridiculous. So, let's 
in there. Now the way these connect, again as I show you before, is between, well, if they connect between them, uh, they are, those are the, sorry, lost my train of thought there, uh, the RIO cables and JTAG and all that, those connect to some connectors here, so there's this um, cover for the bulkhead, which contains those, and also keeps the connectors in. Lock this out. And behind there, uh, there are the connectors. You cannot see them, but believe me, they are there. And then the corresponding connectors are down in the in the I.O. drawer. So these two in this card right here, these are the RIO um, cables, so the actual data buses. And then we have I should lower the camera down. There we go, we're going handheld now. So I'll show you the connectors on the central electronics uh, complex. So as you can see we have the VSCOM connector, RIO bus 0, RIO bus 1, JTAG and that's it for the um, central electronics complex. If you got this drawer by itself you wouldn't be able to do squat with it. You'd need this. Because this is, again, it's just the silicon. The rest of the computer is here. So let's take a look at the connectors on this. So we have 100 megabit uh, twisted per ethernet. We have the VSCOM, JTAG, we have SCSI, low voltage differential, a debug connector, which is blanked out, but there we go. It's just a DB25. A parallel port, because, and it even has a printer on it. Because of course, you're, you're going to be connecting a printer to your 150 to 175 thousand uh, dollar mainframe. Well, printer port, PS2 ports. Again, I don't know. IBM. PS2 ports for a keyboard and a mouse. Officially, this thing doesn't even support graphics cards. I presume you can connect them, but yeah. And then we have a bunch of serial ports. So this is serial port 1. This is where you connect your uh, boot terminal to. Serial port 2. You can also connect another boot terminal to this. Another two serial ports. I don't know. And then we have this J11, J14, J15, J16. I do believe these are for power sequencing. Um, so if you have multiple of these racks, uh, you would connect these things to uh, to the PDUs in them. Now all of the slots here, of course, um, we have our 14 PCI slots. Some of them have this. These two slots are, by the way, unusable right now because it has the option with the discs, the, the internal discs. And these two, uh, they are right here behind this. So these two slots uh, become occupied when you put the discs in them. Then we have, well, apparently I thought this machine was being used just with this network card, but apparently this blanking plate looks one heck of a lot more different than the other, so I presume there was another network card in here at some point. These are the SSA cards, so serial, at a serial um, storage architecture slots, uh, sorry, cards, just HBAs. I do believe they do RAID and they have like battery backup and some cache memory and all that. Um, these are the, these cute micro D connectors. And well, let's take a look at the guts. Um, I'm gonna take the CC um, off of this 
and we're gonna take a look at the IO drawer first because you would think that the interesting stuff in the, is in the CEC it's actually in the IO drawer because this is again just the CPUs and just the memory uh, that has the rest of the computer including the interrupt controller and many other things I should I'll, I shall look at a list I have the service manual right here up on my laptop so uh, I'll take a look we'll take a look at that now so first of all let's take a look at this schematic um, on the IO drawer so you can see everything uh, detailed and you can just pause the video and actually take all of this in because I'm probably most likely um, gonna get something wrong so here's how everything goes in there right so to take this thing apart you unscrew and do these um, two thumb screws and I'll get you back on the tripod and I'll show you I apologize in advance because I know my big noggin is eventually gonna get in the shot and cover everything and look at that uh, yeah this thing is dirty it's apparently been working uh, since 2001 this machine is from 2001 it's been working since then non-stop up until it was retired not too long ago so that's the cover off and you can see there these are all the PCI slots again 14 of them Let's see if we can take a closer look there these are all hot swap so as you can see the slots are there and there's these um, airflow redirection things in between them I presume they are that and yeah so to remove a card well there are the bus, the bus controllers uh, down there those um, heat sinks right there are the bus controllers the PCI bus controllers so there's that also the SCSI discs the internal SCSI discs there they are and there's this mid plane where all the uh, buses connect well not the PCI one but SCSI and all that I'll show you that in a little bit more detail later and of course this cage in the middle is the RIO uh, controller which actually will you know communicates with the rest of the system so let's take a card out so the way you take a card out in one of these supposing of course everyone knows how to take a PCI card out but supposing uh, you're doing it hot swap there's some LEDs right next to each card right there those light pipes right there that light up so you go into connect to the system go into AIX to a prompt and tell it to offline one of these cards then one of these LEDs changes color and once it's changed color you know it you're good to remove the card so what you do is you remove this right here you well you turn this actually like so and you get this little catch at the end it's if it's a long card and also retract it like so and then you just pull the card like that and once you pull the card there's this little um, black thing right there this little flap which activates I believe a micro switch and tells the system that you've removed the card
Now these are again SSA cards. There's two of them in the system. Um, 32-bit PCI. Yeah, let's take a look at that. That is dead. Lithium battery. That is dead. Most likely. Um, apparently these also do RAID or something because, well, you can see there's some memory here. And, of course, the, this is a backup a battery. And there's also another sticker memory here. This is a DIM. I presume this is going to be just PC something ECC. Maybe fully buffered. Nope, it's not even buffered. Uh, how many chips are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It is ECC. And this is... I have absolutely no clue uh, the capacity of this, but it's just a PC 100 from the looks of it, yep. Take a look at that. A bit more closely if I can get this thing to focus. Come on, there we go, PC 100 memory. Pretty standard stuff. Of course, you know, this, um, even if it's an IBM super proprietary system, uh, there's some standard PC stuff simply because it would be cheaper that way uh, for IBM to implement stuff, you know, like the PS2 connectors and the parallel port and all that. Take a look at that mid plane if I can move the tripod there. So we have that mid plane right there. Sorry for the angle, can't do any better. There we go. Uh, so this is where all the buses connect. So we have, they're, they're actually marked here. So that's SCSI, the Terminator is uh, down there. This is just 68 pin SCSI. Uh, there's that one which says diskette, which is for the floppy drive, I presume. We have, let's release this. How do you release this? There we go. go. We have SPCN. I have absolutely no clue what SPCN is, but I presume it connects to the service processor. Oh, actually, SPCN service processor connector. Yeah. And then there's that, which says... OP. Huh. I don't know what that is. So, there's that. Now, those fans that you're seeing are actually the ones from the power supply. Well, I mean, they're system fans, but as I showed you before, they are attached to the power supply. So, let's take a look at this. This being the RIO controller. I'm gonna get a hex key to sorry hex key no a socket a hexagonal socket I have no clue what these are called um well something to remove that screw and let's take that out see if I can find that there we go socket driver get that out of there a little retention thingy. Come on, there we go. Oopsies. Uh, let's get a pair of pliers. Get that out of there before it just. Yeah, there we go. 
that, if it fell down, you know, any deeper than that, I would have had a bad day, let me tell you that. So again, this is the RIO uh, controller. I don't actually know what it's called officially. Let's see if I can find it. Um, cannot find the name for this. Apparently this is not something I should be taking out. So of course IBM hasn't put a name for it in the documentation, but let's take it out anyways. There we go. Look at that huge <laughs> connector. That is one impressive connector. I'm pretty sure that must have cost an absolute fortune. Uh, these connectors do cost a lot of money uh, new. And of course it's mating part on this card. Right there, we can see something through there, through the vents. See if I can take this apart and we can see. I mean, there's really not much to it. Actually, there's just an IC and the voltage regulator. You can see it through here. So there's just a, a voltage regulator card here and an IC with a heat sink there. There's not really that much. Uh, yeah, systems integration, even back in 1999, was pretty good. I presume this is a, a debug connector, some, some sort of debugging. Doesn't say anything. And of course the RIO connectors on the back of the card. Let's just put this thing back in here. Let's see, like so. There we go. Now I'll show you, after I put this screw in here, I'll show you the front of the, the front part. Of the, actually, I can show you right now. I even have the screwdriver appropriate. For that, remember that about my noggin, like covering the shot? Yeah, there it is. Actually, I thought I had the appropriate, sorry. I thought I had the appropriate driver, but I didn't. There it is. Let's see if I can get there. comes out and I actually thought there was more in there but there isn't so there's just the cables that's it uh, this for the system service processor that board is loosey-goosey in there oh yeah there's scuzzy uh, connector and that's pretty much about it Oh, you're kidding me. No way. Oh, no way. Now that is cool. The CD-ROM drive in it is actually 68 pin. It's not 50 pin. That is beautiful. I can actually... Huh, I'm gonna stuff that thing into the SCSI box that I got. Great, now I have an external CD-ROM drive for, well, for other SCSI systems. That's, that's pretty neat. I did not expect that. Wow. I was wondering where the 50-pin, where the narrow uh, SCSI bus for the 
CD-ROM drive was. Well, turns out there's, there's none. Great. Actually, I wonder where the SCSI controller um, in this is because well, I cannot see anything. I can see where the heck the SCSI uh, comes from. Huh. Must be one of these chips. There we go. So that is the I.O. drawer. Let's take a look at the CEC with the CPU and all that. So another overview, this time of the CEC. Um, because of course I'm gonna miss something again. So there's the little schematic. There we go. Let's open this one up. There we go, and I better hurry and show you this quickly because it's about time kids get out of school and I, it just so happens that I'm, well, close to school. And yeah, there's gonna be a lot of noise uh, in a few minutes here, so let's cover off that. So this is the CEC. As you can see, there's really not much to it. Um, there's two connectors here. So that, that one is labeled miscellaneous power. And this one is labeled... What is it? CEC SPCN. No clue whatsoever. Um, I believe it. this thing has some sort of system controller in the front which blinks a little LED when the machine comes up and I presume that's where it is connected. Now these are the processor and memory cards. So this is the processor card just in CS1. This is slot M1, slot M2. These two are memory risers. Now this machine has uh, something a bit particular about it. So if th in its current configuration this card right here has four um, RS64-3 processors. They're pretty much uh, power PC CPUs only just a bit beefed up with a lot of cache, so they have 4 megabytes of cache uh, each and I do believe they don't perform as well in floating point stuff, they're very good at uh, integer so it, it's a bit of a... Um, it's about a, a bit of a middle ground in between PowerPC and proper you know IBM Power 3 CPUs, I believe it borrows some things from uh, Power 3 and some from Power PC. The ISA is certainly Power PC. So again, this is a machine with four CPU configurations, four for 50 megahertz. Now these machines could be had from a single 400 megahertz uh, card to six um, to a, a card with six RS64-4 CPUs at 600 megahertz. And here's the noise! How beautiful. Uh, well, yeah. So this card is a 2483. That's the part number for it. Um, now what's particular about this is in multiprocessor uh, configurations of this machine, this is just a CPU card and it just contains the CPUs, all the processors and then the memory goes in these when this is configured as a single processor machine the single processor actually goes in this card and also the memory goes here there, you cannot put memory in these actually, let me rephrase that, you can put memory in these but you cannot have memory at the same time in the single CPU card and these 
So let's take out the memory boards, of course, first. Let's take this one out of M2. Now it looks like this machine at some point had a blanking uh, plate here and it only had one memory board installed because they have uh, very different uh, styles. Uh, they, they look like they were made far apart from each other. And also this machine con currently contains 12 gigabytes of memory and 12 gigabytes of memory in 2001 when this thing was um, purchased that would have been quite a lot of money. So let's take a look at this. So again, just has your cryptic IBM FRUs right there. Uh, bus connectors there, or whatever they are. They are connectors, quite certainly. And there we have our memory. So these are very long DIMMs. They are not uh, regular consumer DIMMs. We have these for airflow redirection, uh, these fillers. Now these are 512 uh, megabyte DIMMs. It, this machine can take up to 1 gigabyte uh, DIMMs. So of course it could take up to 32 gigabytes. So these are the memory controllers, memory interfaces. This is presumably part of the voltage regulation. And let's take a look at one of the... And there it goes, flying! Beautiful! Let's take a look at one of the DIMMs. There we go. It's just an ECC DIMM. There really is nothing to it at all. It just has the notches in a different place compared to regular DIMMs. of this thing back into its place. Am I doing it right? No. There we go. There's memory card. Exactly the same. Well, uh, it has a... Actually, I think it has a few differences because it's earlier. Yeah, it's just the color of the PCB and the heat sinks, and that's about it. And let's take a look at the processor card. And this one is heavy, it's very heavy. Um, of course it contains four processors, so let's uh, take a look at that. This is humongous. It's It's... Yeah, of course they put a handle in it, because, well, yeah. There we have our voltage regulation, <laughs> look at that. And here we have some heat sinks for the CPUs. Now I'm going to be taking apart uh, this CPU module in another video, which I'll probably shoot later today. Because this thing is a, a piece of art in and of itself. Look at that connector. That is just glorious. Look at that. That is just ridiculous. Um, and there's also, so these two parts are actually interconnected in between them, and I don't know if you can see it. You probably cannot, but there's a little uh, compression connector, the kind of compression connector that gives all of those problems in the SGI machines, connecting these two halves. So yeah, let's take a look at the board. There's actually nothing really down here. And of course my battery died just as I was about to finish the video. And I don't have much, much charge left anyways. So yeah, again, there's nothing in that card apart from those huge bus boards. So yeah, that's about it for this system. Uh, E-Server 660, uh, E-Server e P-Series 660, Model 6H1. I hope this gave you some insight into what um, IBM Big Iron P-Series systems uh, look like, or, or at least looked like uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. So, that's about it.